have the diameter of the smaller circle, D. Let me just draw that. So here's my big circle, here's my small circle. And the diameter of the small circle, little d, is one-fourth the diameter of the big circle, big D. We'll label that, D, and little d. And we want to know what's the probability. If you pick a point inside the larger circle, and it's random, that's also going to be in the smaller circle, so maybe somewhere here. Well, the probability of this happening, I mean, I would just think of this as um, the area of little circle over the area of the big circle, right? And, right, because the area of the big circle is the total area, and probability you look at the total area, and the uh, area of the little circle for the dot falling into is the success zone. So let's define those things, right? Pi r squared is the area for formula. And if you remember, that just means if you have a circle and you draw a radius square, right, like this, the area of that one radius square is too small. So to figure out how many radius squares you need, that's just a, a square that's built on the radius of a circle, you multiply it by pi, because it takes a little bit more than three of these radius squares to equal the area of the circle. So let's write this down. What's the area of the small circle? Well, that really is just pi, let me use a different color, pi times what? Well, the diameter of this circle, you take the big diameter, this is for the small circle, it's so the diameter is really one-fourth of the big diameter. So really what I'm saying is I could write for the little circle pi times diameter over 2, because that, that's radius squared. But what I'm going to say is, I want to write this in terms of the, the big diameter. So it's really pi, and then I'm changing this with big D over 4, right? And we're going to put it over 2, because it's half of that. All I did there was say, well, the little diameter is one-fourth of the big diameter, so I'm substituting the little diameter for D over 4. It's going to be over 2, because our little d is being divided by 2, right? It's cut in half to represent the radius. So it's this over 2, oops, this over 2, squared. The radius is being squared over, oops, I didn't write squared, squared over pi times big D over 2 squared. That's the area of the big circle. So how do we evaluate this? Well, let's start with the denominator over here. D over 2 squared, that's just d squared, big D squared, over 4 times pi. And in the numerator we have, well, d over 4 over 2, we multiply numerator and denominator by 1 half, we get big D over 8 squared times pi. Before I go any further, I'm going to cancel out the pi's. And now for d over 8 squared, we get d squared. Right, d squared over what? Well, what is what is eight squared? That's just sixty-four. Over d squared over four. Over d squared over four. And what's that? Well, I want to multiply both numerator and denominator by four over. All right, over here, d squared. Four over d squared. What's that going to give me? Well, in the numerator I have written d squared over 64 times 4 over d squared. And in the denominator I have d squared over 4 times 4 over d squared. Well, that's just 1. Here the d squareds cancel out. And we're left with 4 over 64, which is 1 16th in our answer for this question. So again, all I did find the area of the bigger shape compared to the small shape, right as a fraction of the small shape to the big shape, and in terms of area, and I just simplified and manipulated the stuff until I had one variable, right? I just wanted to have the big D in there instead of the small D. And you could have plugged it in later if you wanted to. I just chose to plug it in at the beginning so that we're only dealing with one variable, D squared, which worked out nicely because they canceled out. And other problems, here it says, an experiment consists of flipping a coin six times, and every time you do that, there are two options. 
how many different outcomes are in the sample space for this experiment. Well, if every time you flip a coin, there's two options. So it's two times two for two flips, times two for three, times two for four, times two for five flips, times two for six flips. This is equal to two to the sixth power, which is choice B, right? That's a lot of outcomes. And I think maybe we have one other here. Okay, here we go. A bag contains 10 blue marbles. Let's usually write this down and draw bags and stuff. We have 10 blue marbles, 7 red marbles, 5 green marbles, ooh, lots, and 3 yellow, 3 yellow marbles. 3 yellow marbles. And let me just outline the yellow in a color so we can definitely see it. All right, so three, I'll write that like this, three yellow marbles. If two marbles are randomly drawn from the bag without replacement after the first draw, so we're taking marbles out and we're not putting them back, what is the probability that both marbles will be yellow? So we have the probability of a marble being yellow. In general, on the first pick, it's going to be three out of the total, which is what? Well, 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 10 more blue is 20, is 25. So in the first pick, getting yellow, the chance is 3 out of 25. Well, what is the probability of getting a yellow on on the second the second pick? Well, you, you, you're you assuming that, well, we're not assuming, we know there's, there's one less marble in the bag. And now, we are assuming that, that one of them, perhaps the yellow one was taking, so there, there's still... A, now there's a 2 out of 24 chance that you'll get a yellow. Why? Because you have to assume that the t you did take the yellow. Right? You have to give that, uh, you have to give that your, your, oh, I should, I should say it. Uh, I guess let me, sorry, let me step back. What you're really looking at is the probability of, of picking a yellow, which means you're trying to figure out the number of ways, right, the number of ways you could pick a yellow. That's what probability tells us over the total number of ways you could pick two marbles, right, without replacement. Two marbles. And that's that's where the 25 times 24 comes from, right? At first chance there are 25 marbles to pick from. The second chance one's gone away, so now there's 24. Well the numerator is saying uh, well, how many ways are there, are there to get a yellow the first time? Well, there are three. How many ways are there to get a yellow the second time? Well, now, you're, you're, first you counted that there are three ways to get the yellow. You're looking at getting a yellow, not the other possibilities. We're just finding the w amount of ways to get a yellow. On the second trial, there, now there's only two ways left. So the choice is B. And if we had simplified, we would do three times two, which is six, and then 25 times 24 as a denominator, which I'm not going to bother working out here. Okay, hope that helped.